Hello and welcome to this demonstration of how to configure SMTP archiving in Enterprise Vault 1101. So I'm starting the uh, demonstration on my Exchange server and I've already opened up the Exchange Management Console. There are two things I want to do here. First of all, I want to set up a send connector. So I'm just going to go to the organization configuration. and hub transport and over here click new send connector so I've called it root to smtp.local now that is a, a fictitious domain that I'm using to route all the emails to my Enterprise Vault server. It's a good idea to use a local domain as opposed to one that would actually exist within the DNS. Add in the address space. And I want to route mail using a smart host. And I can add in here the IP addresses of each one of my Enterprise Vault servers. So I'm not going to use any authentication in this particular demonstration just to keep things simple. In a production environment, you probably do want to use authentication with the TLS. So the source server is going to be my exchange server, so that's fine. And I'm going to create the send connector. The next thing I need to do is to set up a journal rule. So you can see it's going to journal all mail to, to EV. So it's going to journal everything to this address. So all emails in and out of my whole exchange organization present to this particular email address. So now I'm going to switch my Enterprise Vault server to continue the demonstration. So on this Enterprise Vault server, I just wanted to show you that in order to use SMTP archiving, you do need to actually install this feature. I've already actually done it in this uh, particular demonstration environment. I just wanted to show you that. So choose SMTP archiving components and complete the in installation. Remember also that really to get all the features that we need for SMTP archiving, you should be using EV1101, Cumulative Hotfix 2 or above. So let me just show you the service that gets added. So we've got this service here, the Enterprise Vault SMTP service, and you can see that started. That service is actually listening on TCP port 25 for emails. So let's go to my Enterprise Vault uh, admin console now. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create an archive to receive the emails. I'm going to create an SMTP archive. I'm going to put it in the corporate vault store and I'm going to call it EV journal. 
it doesn't have to match up with the email address, but it, for um, troubleshooting purposes, it's a good idea to match them up. And I'm going to make sure that EV Service has got permissions to that archive. There is a policy for SMTP archiving. So let's have a look at that. There is a default policy. In here, I can configure X headers, which we will look at in a subsequent demonstration. There are also a couple of advanced settings. So for RMS protected copies, and there's the journal report processing. So what this does is it means that um, SMTP archiving for target email addresses using this policy will process journal reports. The other option there is to remove or discard the journal reports and you would use that if you're using the, um, the journal mailbox archiving option. But we'll leave that as process journal reports. There's also a site setting for SMTP archiving, so under advanced. So delete messages without recipients. So by default, if you haven't got target email addresses, then any, um, any email files that land up in the holding folder will be deleted. Logging in action when a message uh, doesn't get archived, by default that's set to no. Um, so you might want to set that to yes. And selective journal archiving is on. So if you're not going to use that feature, I strongly recommend you switch it off because um, it actually adds a, a performance overhead to your archiving. So the next thing we need to do is set up the um, settings for the actual service. And we do that by going under targets, going to SMTP, right click this and go to properties then I can click configure settings and it starts a wizard so what port number am I going to use for my SMTP server the default is port 25 I can also limit maximum message size here this is quite a good feature I can specify which computers I exchange servers can send emails into my EV server. So that's quite a good feature to consider. I'm not going to use authentication. And I'm going to allow unencrypted connections. If you require encrypted connections, then you need to import security certificate here. Right, the next thing I need to do is set up a target email address. So right click SMTP and go new target email address. Obviously it's very important that this matches to the email address that I've put into the journal rule which I created earlier. I'm going to use the default SMTP policy and the 10 year retention category. And then specify the archive. And that actually creates the target email address. So it's asking me whether I want to create the archiving task, which I do. So it starts another wizard. Uh, specify the EV server that I want to run archiving on and then specify a holding folder so I'm going to put it under D
So if we go down here, we should see that we have a task now running. And you can see that it's in a processing state, which is good. So I'm now ready to demonstrate this. And how I'm going to do this, go back to my Exchange server. And I've already got OWA open here. I'm going to create a new email. Okay, so it's sent that email, so let's go back to my EV server. And if we go into D SMTP holding, you'll notice I've got a number eight folder. So it creates these folders like this, and it's a bit like what happens in a vault store partition. The idea being to spread the EML files over multiple subfolders so we don't get too many files in one folder. So there is the, um, the EML file that is now going to be picked up by the SMTP archiving task and archived into my EV journal SMTP archive. This will take um, a couple of minutes to complete. Okay, the email has been removed from the SMTP holding folder. So now I can go and see whether it's actually been archived. And you can see that the email has now been ingested into this archive um, successfully. So that brings us to the end of this demonstration of how to configure SM2P archiving in Enterprise Vault 1101. Thank you very much.